Hello, can people hear me? Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so <clears throat> introduction to AI. Uh, uh, <laughs> My slide is on one computer on a speaker uh, microphone on another computer side. Sometimes it give you a warning say make sure that just <laughs> uh, okay. So uh we, we call it artificial intelligence. Uh is the word artificial is modeled after the sometimes we say human intelligence, but it really uh, many uh, animals have this uh in fact, uh, one of the earliest uh, electrophysiology, how the neuron work is done in, uh, I want to say, uh, shrink, uh, some large shrink, rather the nerve is quite visible there. Uh, but then cat is <clears throat> more like a, one of the mammals. Uh, I guess it's a cat that so we can uh, operate on it. Um, so the cat can be the head can be fixed and probe can be uh, attached physically. So it's uh, <clears throat> and then you can uh, the one that technology you can actually we can actually record a single neuron uh, firing when there's a signal. Yeah. So the idea is uh, <clears throat> we have the cat uh, fixed there with the eye looking at some images and then record the activity of single neuron. Now, <clears throat> and this is actually, uh, I, I put my citation in the, in the, in the book, uh, Deep Learning Illustrated. So the idea is that the scientists want to see what kind of a signal the cat eye will see, and then leads to the specific activity of particular neuron. And it's almost by accident, we, when they move some image, they found out that there's some trigger to fire a particular neuron, and then they try to see what kind of trigger. So in this case, uh, you see that this, uh, can I annotate this? Let me see. <clears throat> annotate. Yeah. So in this case, you see the, let me see, this neuron here, has a lot of activity. And what signal this is, this is a vertical signal. This is a vertical signal. Which new neuron has no activity is the horizontal one. Oh, this is the, that's right. This is horizontal has zero, no activity. <clears throat> so it, so basically if there's a uh, object or image you, for this neuron, we, Vertical, the new one is highly active, and then we tilt it, tilt it, tilt it, tilt it. You see the uh, signal become less, less, and then nothing. And if you tilt it to the other end, less, 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 then nothing. So this neuron is very sensitive to a vertical one. And this just one neuron. And then if we can put the probe in a different neuron, and we'll find out some neurons are more sensitive to horizontal, some are more diagonal, uh, some may be a curve, this, this. There are many neurons in the brain layer, but it seems each neuron is specific to a particular signal. And those are just low, <clears throat> oh, uh, how do I erase this? Clear or not? Okay. And then, <clears throat> uh, it turned out that uh, the the neurons will be uh, sensitive. Some neuron will be uh, vertical, horizontal, left diagonal, or right diagonal, depending on uh, uh, which side you stand on. Right. So this is just the uh, first layer, but the brain actually has multiple layers. And so now the second layer is working on a signal from the input, the lower layer. And then those go to adjust for more complicated features. For example, a curve, curve I don't know what they call it, <laughs> uh, angle, uh, another vertical angle. Uh, this is lower and then upper right. Right. 
So they had all kind of a combination. Uh, and those still relatively simple, but the actual world image is much more complicated than those. So they are more, and the second layer, third layer, they're going to dealing with more complicated signals. And in the end, from the perspective of a cat, it's objective to recognize its prey, the, the mouse. So, and if the cat look at the mouse, they'll say, oh, that's a mouse. And that's what, fox or dog, that should, we avoid it. Uh, if it's a, a mouse, go after it, I guess. It's a survival, right? So for the cat, it's a, a basically recognize the right target, avoid the proper target. This, that's a, basically, if the neuron doesn't work that way, it's just a uh, life or death uh, issue. So <clears throat> apparently, over the year of evolution, that's how the neuron learned to work. Now, this is the animal brain or cat brain. Apparently, a human is very similar to that. Uh, wait, it's not quite right. Here. Okay, so I, on the right hand side is what we call a very simple uh, neural network. Uh, nowadays, we, we can actually implement that uh, um, TensorFlow, PyTorch. With type uh, with ChatGPT, just probably a few seconds you'll get it. <laughs> so the yeah, input layer, output layer classification. So basically, on the left hand side, that's the animal brain. On the right hand is what we call artificial neural network. On the left hand side is, I guess you can call it a real animal neural network. Although it's kind of abstracted, the real neural is also much, probably much more complicated. In a way, this is what we think is a computational model of the animal brain work. Uh, but it's closer enough. So, <clears throat> but on the right hand side is the our implementation trying to this is how animal brain work. It can do many cool things. We want to implement this artificial neural network and do some cool things. Right. But a cat is going to recognize mouse, a fox, bird, dog, and then, then this must be either a cat or dog. And look like a cat. Right? Yeah. So, but on the right hand side, this is one of the simplest uh, neural network. What can you do? It recognize handwritten uh, upper, uh, digits. So, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 10 digits, right? So, uh, <clears throat> Let me see, I'm going to use my annotator so people online can also see. So see here, the two is green. So in the animal brain, if the right signal, the, the new neuron highly actively recognize signal, but on the right hand, this, this input is recognized by this neural network as two. Is it correct? It doesn't look like it's handwritten two. But. So basically this is, we have this image, a handwritten 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. And that this neural learn to tell is this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's uh, one of the simplest neural networks. So, <clears throat> and we're actually going to uh, uh, do this kind of a. Uh, uh, okay, sorry. I need to. How do I re erase it? Okay, I'll erase. So, <clears throat> and that's basically <laughs> my introduction to neural net, the basic concept. Now, there's actually a lot of things behind to make it work. The idea of use neural network, when I was at your age, is already there, but it was never popular. Ne nobody thought it's going to do cool things like ChatGPT <laughs> at that time. And in fact, uh, when, I, when I was uh, quick, uh, a field to do PhD work, I was otherwise, that's not a good field to start, which is good. Otherwise, I will spend many, many years doing a, a field that hasn't, hasn't picked up. But, <laughs> so, but so, so I, people say neurobiology is actually cooler than artificial intelligence because that's 
seems to be a purely mathematical theoretical work at that time. So, <clears throat> but not anymore. In fact, today, the, I put a website there, playgroundprinciple.org. Uh, so this is a free website. <clears throat> and we can actually go to build a uh, neural network from scratch and try to do some very cool recognition tasks. But the idea of this exercise to, to learn what is, why the feature of input data is important, why the number of layer is important, the number of neuron per layer is important, what is the loss function, what is the activation function, what the learning rate, epoch, and regular uh, analyzation. So those are the very important concepts of new, building neurons. And those, we often call that hyperparameter. And the number of neurons or number of layers, we, sometimes we call that how the architecture choice, how to build the neural network, what kind of a model you use. Sometimes we call that architecture. Right? If you watch the movie Matrix, you know the architect is the God's <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> so how to build the, uh, the architect of neural network is one of the most important design choice. So, <clears throat> so uh, and so you can actually try some simple cases, a linear model. So those are neural networks. We can put the activation can be linear. If everything is linear, what is, what is that? That's basically become a linear regression. If everything is linear, the whole thing is basically a linear regression. So in fact, you can try that and it, it's not going to work. And you build a neural network, it just look like going on last. <laughs> it's not going to work very well. So the advantage of neural network is really put those nonlinear feature into it. Uh, okay, so and this is, uh, so uh, I'm going to also go to that uh, uh, website myself. Uh, play ground tensor flow and then share the <clears throat> yes <clears throat> uh let me copy paste that in the chat window so this is so uh okay so let's first start with a very simple task and now we have a circle <clears throat> We have a circle of dots, uh, blue dots in the middle, and yellow dots around. And we just want to uh, train a neural network model to separate the blue dots from the yellow dots. And in this case, uh, by default, uh, I have two uh, input feature, x1, x2. So X1, you can see X1 is just left and right, is horizontal. X2 is up and down, it's vertical. So this is basically like the, the, the mouse look at things. You just recognize two features, left and right, up and down. And then I have just one neuron. Uh, it's not going to work, but let's see. <laughs> so let's just see how badly it works. It, yeah, it's, it's just become well, this is even worse than linear regression. So I'll just stop it. So the, the <clears throat> that play button is to train this neural network model on the blue and the yellow input. And, and then you look at the right, <clears throat> you see the orange uh, area, it's orange area, blue area, that's how the model performs. So in the orange is the orange dot, in the blue it should be blue dot. And this clearly didn't work very well because in the blue region, there's almost like 60% uh, are also yellow dots there. But if you look at top right, uh, you see there's a testing loss, there's a training loss. The training loss is a light gray, it's going down, and the testing loss is dark, uh, black on the top. So clearly the training loss is much lower than the testing. So even though this very simple model, this run into this one, training is very good. Testing is terrible. This is something we call what? Overfitting. 
So that's always a problem for neural network model. It's, a, it's not just for neural, you can overfitting a linear model as well. <laughs> so, but this is a very simple uh, model, neural, it's already overfitting. So, but if we add two neurons, uh, what do you think? This, just take a while to get. What do you think? If, if I now add a two neurons, by the way, this is output layer. Uh, what do you think the result would be? Uh, hopefully, yeah, let's let's see. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah it, it does, uh, indeed, it's much better. It's just one more neuron. It, once it becomes flat, it's not very efficient to training anymore. So <clears throat> I see once it's flat, we can just stop. By the way, those are the epochs. They say how many times you run over the uh, in, uh, input data. How many, one time in, in one epoch, two times, two epochs. So this is small data set is okay. Uh, we didn't do the batch. So like some data sets for deep learning, like uh, IGBT, HR, New York Times models input. It's impossible to load everything there. So you do it by batch, 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 batch. And in this exercise, that, that input is small. We, we are not doing that batch. So, if you want to rewrite the website, have a better <laughs> that's opportunity. So, okay, but this this small exercise didn't teach us that batch concept. <clears throat> so, uh, but in this case, you can see the blue is this part, orange is surrounding. So, this is certainly much better than the one new one, right? But how do we think we can improve this, right? We can, what can we kind of, a number of layers. Wait, let's add another layers. So now I have two layers and two neurons. And this, uh, oh, I didn't write it down. Uh, it does, the, the, the paper is point two something. This one is lower. Maybe I should write it down. <laughs> so yeah, this is point one six something. I remember the previous point two something, but you can go back and verify yourself. Uh, so it is not improving anymore. So the overfitting issue is still there. So to address overfitting, there's other way. You can add, we can add a noise, actually. We can add noise. Oh, there's a batch site. Sorry, my mistake. The batch site is here. Huh. Uh, my apologies to the TensorFlow organization. <laughs> so the batch size actually is at the bottom ten. Every time you input a ten, uh, ten testing point. So, <clears throat> so you can actually adjust the batch size. Adjust the batch size will be learn faster and uh, because the input the more representative. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, let's try that. Yeah, it trained faster, but it's not learning fast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm surprised. Uh, oh, that's because I adjust the noise. The noise level five probably is too high. Right. I should have changed more than one. Okay, yeah. That's an effect on noise, not a batch size. The batch size should affect the training, the prediction result, it's just a speed. Unless if the batch is unbalanced, unbalanced and biased. So, so there are cases, say, I, I train a data set. I have 90% of my data sets is uh, orange. 10% of my data is blue. But when I choose a batch, because there are so many orange, every time I just give it the orange. It's not <laughs> then there is a, there is a problem there. So. <clears throat> so that actually happens very often, too, especially in biology, the medical data. <clears throat> so, oh, this is interesting. What did I do? Uh, it's actually much more accurate. It, oh, wow. After a long time, it found a uh, solution. Oh, this is interesting. You see, it has been flat. If you look at the figure on the right, it has been flat for a long time, and all of a sudden, it found a better solution. 
it, it carve out this small region to be yellow. It, it is interesting. <laughs> so, I, actually, this is a problem of neural network. It is not reproducible. That's the main problem of the uh, it, it gave you a principle, you change the chat, you change again, it's going to be different. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it's, it's not like linear regression, you can predict that's the line, that's the slow value. <laughs> but, but deep learning, it's, it's hardly reproducible. And I wouldn't say it's impossible, it's very, very hard. That's the, but this one is interesting. Uh, you, you see, after a long time, it lost. So then it goes down. And even, in fact, even the overfitting become a little better. Yeah. So, <laughs> so but then <clears throat> but in practice, uh, if you are stuck there, you run a company, you have this budget to train. How do you know you are going to, <laughs> if you just give it another, a hundred thousand, you will get a better. <laughs> you don't know. That's actually, if you can figure that one out, uh, you will be an expert of AI business. <laughs> so how to train the model faster, efficient, with less budget. In fact, the majority of companies recently on that aspect. How do you think NVIDIA makes a lot of money? They just make the GPU much more efficient. But every time they say improve, improve, improve. <laughs> so, Okay, <clears throat> sorry, but the whole point is by adjusting those point and neuron, you see how the neural network performs. So, what other parameter we have not adjusted? Uh, learning rate, activation function, regular. We can skip regular uh validation for the time being. Uh, we can actually try this with the uh, relu or linear. We can try this with linear. Activation function basically means. The signal from a previous layer to the next layer, how the input signal and output signal were related to each other. Uh, that, uh, so all other uh, kind of edge sigmoid, they are kind of, some kind of a reverse the S. Um, it depends on how, how the input and output look like. They are either the positive S or the negative S. Even though they will have subtle difference because they do improve the effect of performance. Now the linear is this just a line. Everything is linear like color. Now this real rectify is actually kind of a very smart idea because everything the uh, the S shape is very slow. You have to fit it on it. But linear is much faster. How do you combine the linear and the nonlinear? And that's the idea of a relu. It, it, one part is cut off, the other part is linear. Apparently, that just works just fine. But we can see whether that's the case. <clears throat> uh, we could first choose a linear. Point four a. So this is a lot. Uh, it, it, OK, we can just stop. And then we choose uh, relu. <clears throat> Point two five. I guess that's okay. But you can also see the linear model has much less overfitting issue. You see that the testing and the training line they are very close for the linear. So even though linear model performance is bad, but it's actually more reliable. <laughs> So whatever you train on, you testing on, they are very close. So the linear model performance may be bad, but it's actually very, very reliable. So the overfitting issue is much less. So, and then uh, relu, and then we can change it back to 10 H or sigmoid. Uh, Yeah, this is much better, I think. <laughs> yeah, so everything non-linear, uh, with, when it's complex data, non-linear system is certainly going to work better, right? Of course, if you give them a linear system, it doesn't matter, right? But the most, unfortunately, in the, in the real world, most of things are non-linear. So. <clears throat> 
So there, so this is quite obvious. Uh, <clears throat> if you go back to the slides, you will realize uh, there are more complicated uh, example. Let me see. Uh, the slide is also uh, online, by the way. Oh, that's too big to see. Um, it's, but I put it on GitHub as well. Uh, actually, there is one feature we still haven't changed. Oh, I already gave you an answer. <laughs> we haven't changed the input feature. Uh, that's one factor, right? So, <clears throat> if 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 we add x square x two square, basically, uh, it turns out. Uh, There, with the proper input feature, input feature, even one output neuron can do the job. So this is the feature engineering is utterly important for deep learning. So if you look at the, if you look at the many people working in that field, a lot of the time they work on what these are high people to annotate the data, has a better feature, better quality, like. If you listen to the the Sam Alderman talk, he he openly admit New York Times really helped. <laughs> and then of course when he said that New York Times really he had to pay for that. <laughs> so, yeah. But what this means input the data quality and feature really matter. Right? So you can have brilliant idea how the neural network without training data is still nothing. Yeah. So this this Example clearly show that if you just x one i one with that, it's, it just become a line, right? But once I add the proper feature to to for the prediction, it works. <laughs> but that says, in most of the time, you don't know what kind of feature you need for the result. In many cases, you you do not know. In this case, I know because a circle is properly related to a square. <laughs> so I mean, it's a geometry. It's but in many social, is very social biology, medical. We don't know. We don't even know the mechanism. So sometimes the it's much more easy to to do what auto encoder. Let let the machine generate. Many many feature and let the machine pick which feature is useful. That actually is very important. Auto encoder. So that's a very genius idea. <laughs> yeah. So because we we just I mean a human look at mind think how things work, but if you think think long time ago we think the entire world is floating on the back of big turtle. <laughs> that's how we think the world works, but in reality, that's not how the world works. So, so, so we think the how the world, but it may not. So, but let the machine run through all the feature and pick it. That's ten times is the best approach. I wouldn't say that it's the best; it's the most practical approach at least for now. Uh, uh, in fact. You may have heard that we should take proper engineering course, learn how to use ChatGPT. It turns out the best, best way is also to auto optimization <laughs> because human just cannot optimize any, anything. The two, or well, two is, you, you have two choice, two choice, two times two is four. You have three choice, each one is uh, a one, zero and one and the eight. So it's, Quickly it goes up, but it's just hard to keep track. <laughs> so, yeah, so <clears throat> even for large language the proper engineering, auto, some kind of automated prompt optimization is also needed. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, this whole thing quickly becomes a business on its own. <clears throat> okay, so. Let's see what other factor I have not mentioned. Uh, so features, number of layers, number of neuron, loss function, activation, learning rate, 
Well, in that in this simple case, it's okay because it doesn't learn it by itself. Epochs, regularization, this is okay. Regularization is kind of a trying to address overfitting, noisy issue. But in this case, it the data the is just binary classification. Okay. But we can try more complicated situation, like the spiral shape. But uh if you try using again, this works very well for that circle. But we we try again for a spiral. I guess we don't expect it to work. So even no matter how long we get the trend is. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to let you uh try to work out the solution for this and then share your result. How about this? So I'm going to uh stop here, here let all of you to work on this, uh, and including those people online. And then share your screen. And then explain to me, explain to everybody why you picked those choices to make it work. How about this? Yeah. Elijah, why you are wearing a UAC shirt? What is UAC? Okay. <laughs> I saw you have found Troy. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. My, my, my bad. <laughs> okay. I sometimes win random people because I got it at conference. <laughs> so, and nothing to do with what I work on. Anyone got a little work? <clears throat> hey, Taylia? Tia? Sorry. Say the name again. Taya? How how is your progress? No? Okay. Andrea. Okay. Uh, that's one. Can you uh, can you share your screen? Oh, uh, okay, this is, what's the accuracy, 80%? Uh, okay, anyone got the better result? Let, let's take a screenshot. Uh, Yeah, this is the 
even fewer than the one I on my slide. Just four layer, is it? Four layer. Is it 100% uh, accurate? It does. Very good. You are the first place. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> For the, let, uh, can you zoom out uh, so, so I can take a screenshot? Can you? <clears throat> right now, it's the, your, your your website is cut off. Cut off. Can you share the? Let me share. Can you? Very good. Uh, let's see. How do I pick? Yes, thank you, Elijah. So one, two, three, four. Yes, four layers. Now, so this will be used much less primarily. Uh, <clears throat> in reality, if you think about this, we pick this, pick that, this become an art. And if you talk to uh, people uh, how to design new network, this is really a, a big deal. This is part of artificial intelligence. A bit, uh, uh, <clears throat> if you come from the natural science or physics, mathematics, you don't really like this. <laughs> so because, uh, in part because we don't know how neural network works. So. <laughs> We know it works when it works, but <laughs> when it doesn't work, uh, uh, we don't really have to explain it. <laughs> so, uh, okay, good. Uh, Elijah, next time I was, I will use this one on my uh, PowerPoint. <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, also credit that this is provided uh, uh, what, what do you say? Elijah, what do you say? Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. 